Sunday gathering, so nice to see you all here today. Okay, the title of my talk today, The Cowardly Lion Got a Courage Medal. And if you have the program, if you've seen the program, it's that wonderful image from the Wizard of Oz of the lion getting his courage medal from the wizard. Okay, this has been coming up for me uh, because I really see how much courage it takes for all of us to be miracle workers. How much courage it takes all of us to take on the sickness and death lobby. That's what I like to call it. It's, it's a group that appears to be external that are lobbying, arguing for, being champions of the reality of sickness and death. And they're a very strong lobby, like lots of lobbies are. And if you take them on and challenge them, they don't like it. And they, and they fight back. So how do we take on the sickness and death lobby? What do you mean? Well, because A Course in Miracles takes it on, takes it on really head on. A Course in Miracles says you are not meant to suffer and to die. Your father wills these dreams be gone. Let truth correct them all. You know, that's a direct confront to the sickness and death lobby. And it's a very straightforward statement. And a lot of people, you know, don't really want to deal with it because they know that taking on the sickness and death lobby is really probably going to be kind of difficult. So I'm a little bit, that's what I'm uh, addressed addressing today. So when you take on the sickness and death lobby, the sickness and death lobby fight back, or in other words, the ego fights back. And so the ego has some tools that it uses, and its main tool is fear, or maybe guilt, which is just another flavor of fear. Of course, a miracle says, and God can bring you there if you are willing to follow the Holy Spirit through seeming terror trusting him not to abandon you and leave you there, he would lead you safely through and far beyond. So that was in the reading that Reverend Rudy read. And it's always been uh, a very important uh, idea for me that if we're following the Holy Spirit and we're doing our best to be a messenger of God, that means we're champion the idea that we were not meant to suffer and to die that uh, we're going to go through some moments of terror. I mean, it doesn't just say fear here. It says terror. And we have to follow the Holy Spirit through that terror, trusting that he's not going to abandon us and leave us there, that he's going to take us safely through and far beyond, but we've really got to trust and, and follow through. So some people in their practice and you know, they want to be miracle workers and, you know, the fear comes up and they immediately think something's gone wrong when actually it might be an indication that something is going very, very right. And we have to be willing to follow the Holy Spirit. We have to, we have to develop some courage. You know, as my Latin friends like to say, we have to get some cojones. We have to get some cojones. We have to get some grit. We have to get some daring. We have to get some endurance. We have to get some audacity. Uh, we got to get some balls if I'm going to be a little bit sexist here. That's what cojones means. Uh, and, and take it head on and understand that the Holy Spirit's not going to leave us in this place. The Holy Spirit is going to take us through 
this place. But getting to this place doesn't mean that something's gone wrong. It might actually mean that something's going right. The Course says the ego is therefore capable of suspiciousness at best and viciousness at worst. That is its range. So the, uh, the ego goes from suspiciousness to viciousness and uh, it gets pretty vicious at times. And we're going to need some courage. So uh, I was referring to the Wizard of Oz and uh, I'm sure probably all of us, maybe there's one of us who has not seen the movie version of the Wizard of Oz. I think it was in 1939, but it you know, plays all the time. And it's a, it's a lovely movie, actually. I, I'm sure I've seen it eight, ten times, but yeah, I haven't seen it in a while. Maybe I need to watch it again. But in The Wizard of Oz, one of the main characters is the, quote, cowardly lion. And the cowardly lion knows he's supposed to have courage. He sings about it early on in the film. He sings about how important courage is. But then the cowardly lion has a problem because the cowardly lion is scared a lot. He's scared a lot. And he is shaking a lot and quivering a lot in between the singing. <laughs> and he thought, he thinks he doesn't have courage. And it's one of the, uh, you know, main themes of uh, the, whole, the whole myth uh, is about these characteristics that these characters think they, they don't have. So the cowardly lion does not think that he has courage because he's, he's scared a lot. And, you know, maybe some of us think we don't have courage because we're, scared a lot. And A Course in Miracles really talks quite a bit about the fear that's here in the world and the fear that might come up for us individually. In one place it says the sweat of terror and the scream of mortal fear. Now think about that, the sweat of terror and the scream of mortal fear. And, uh, you know, of course, the miracle always offers us the truth that the Holy Spirit is here helping us. And one place it says, stand you here a while and tremble not. So it's acknowledging that we're scared and we may be shaking. We may be screaming. We have fear of mortal dread. But stand here a while and tremble not. Let the fear be there. Don't make it so important. So as I said, people frequently think that something is going wrong when the fear comes up, when actually it just might mean that you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing and it's now time to call upon the Holy Spirit and stand there for a while and tremble not. And this says, Another very important thing is that you are severely tempted to abandon him, the Holy Spirit, at the outside ring of fear. It's that severe temptation to abandon the Holy Spirit. And I'm confronted with this, and just about every Course of Miracles student I know is confronted with this. And honestly, all too often, I don't do too well with it. And I certainly see a lot of other people not do too well with it. In other words, when that fear comes up, they, I, we all sometimes retreat. We retreat. We go back into the world thought system, which seems safer, which seems familiar. And then we think lines like, you are not meant to suffer and to die. Your father wills these dreams be gone. We think those are just metaphors. Of course, it doesn't really mean that. It's just uh, nice poetry. It's a symbolic way of looking at things. Well, I don't believe that. I think the Course actually does mean those things. And our resistance to accepting those things is because we know what kind of fear is going to come up from the ego if we keep putting that out there. And we've given in to the temptation to abandon the Holy Spirit at the outside ring of fear. And so my main message today is that, you know, there's nothing wrong with the fear. It's okay. A Course in Miracles doesn't say that we're going to be without that fear. It's like those limitations. Um, 
We're not here to be without that fear. We're here to overcome that fear. You know, and sometimes the fear takes the flavor of anger. You know, and anger really always is just uh, our fear that something is going to happen that we don't like, and it's our attempt to somehow manipulate that situation. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, anger's, you know, fear is always at the base of, of all the anger that we have. Fear is at the base of all the guilt that we may feel. We do things, we say things, we think things. We feel we're afraid they're going to have dire consequences, and so we, quote, feel guilty. But fear is at the base of all that. And those are all just the, quote, limitations that we have while we're here manifesting in the world. And the Course says, do not despair then because of limitations. It is your function to escape from them, but not to be without them. If you would be heard by those who suffer, you must speak their language. So that gives us another reason to have courage, another reason to endure, another reason to have a little spunk, Another reason to have some tenacity. Another reason to have some resolution. And maybe another reason to even express a little heroism. It's because if we're going to communicate the word of God to our brothers, sisters, and others, then we, we need to speak their language. We need to know what they're going through. We need to be able to identify with them. So we can offer up our overcoming to the Holy Spirit, knowing then that the Holy Spirit will use our overcoming and the communication of our overcoming to all our sisters, brothers, and others to help them overcome. So, I know I've uh, definitely uh, had a lot of experience with this. And, you know, one of the things uh, that helps me certainly are our messages from A Course in Miracles. Uh, you know, the message of this is an insane world and do not underestimate the actual extent of its insanity. Okay, the world's, the world's pretty crazy. Uh, don't underestimate it. Don't expect that its craziness isn't going to appear. Don't be startled when it appears. I mean, the past uh, 14 months have been pretty crazy in my perception of things. And, you know, I don't like a lot of what's going on, but, you know, the world's kind of nuts. So what else might one expect? So I go within and ask for guidance about how to deal with it and, you know, what should be my response to it. And then I remember Course teachings that, you know, we're here with mighty companions. We don't have to confront these things alone. I mean, that's what the Sunday gathering is every, every Sunday. That's what all of our meetings are. They're a chance to connect with mighty companions, to share a little love with mighty companions. Um, and that is so, so important. I always look forward to Sunday. And I can be in funky moods and fearful moods, and then I think, you know, Sunday's coming. It'll be great. I get to see everybody, talk to everybody. We get to sing together. Woohoo! And, um, and I will feel the strength of that joining. And that strength of that joining is the strength of sanity. It's the strength of sanity. Of course, a miracle says, if you knew who walks beside you on this way, which you have chosen, fear would be impossible. Okay, it's, it's probably referring to the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Christ, but our sisters, brothers, and others all can represent manifestations of the Holy Spirit, manifestations of Jesus, manifestations of the Christ. So there isn't a difference between the mighty companions that are our sister, brothers, and others and the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the Christ. It's all the same. So I see the Christ. I see Holy Spirit. I see Jesus manifesting in my sisters, brothers, and others who are my mighty companions, and certainly my mighty companions here at the Community Miracle Center, and I can face the fears. You know, I have, an, I have an advantage that many people have, but I certainly know that I have it, and the advantage that I have is that 
I had some severe mental health issues. Uh, I've had them in my past. And I really see now that they're actually quite a blessing. So I've had, you know, severe episodes of anxiety, severe episodes of depression. And, uh, you know, I remember when I was going through some of the early ones, you know, many years ago, and I was in support groups where there were other people that were going through depression and anxiety, and I was getting to know these other people, and I could, I, I, you know, you'd hear them talk about what they were dealing with and the, the thoughts and the problems. And I, I remember having the thought, these are the most courageous people I know. These are the most courageous people I know. And in some way, these are the people who had the most fear, but they were facing their fear. As difficult as that was, they were facing it. And that's what the cowardly lion did in The Wizard of Oz. He faced his fears. He had them. He demonstrated them. He displayed them. He shook and he trembled and he was scared. But he kept moving forward with the group that were off to see the wizard. And having courage does not mean that you don't have fear. Having courage means that you're facing your fears. And I really recognized all those years ago that these people who were facing fear at such an extreme level were extremely courageous. Just their existing from day to day was an act of heroism. And I said, I've had those episodes myself. And one of the things I learned, and I know a lot of people that who have mental health challenges learn this, is that you have to learn how to function. You just have to learn how to function within your fear. They, you know, the cognitive therapies that are so helpful for people these days, uh, all that CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, it doesn't get the fear to go away, it gets you to be functional within the fear. And if you can learn that you can function within the fear, eventually the fear tends to subside. You know, the truth is my mind holds only what I think with God, and you don't think fear with God. So it eventually does flow through, but what you have to be able to do is to function in the midst of it. And when you're in the midst of those kind of states, you know, it isn't just thoughts. It's a whole bodily thing. It's a whole sweating thing and a trembling thing and a feeling like life isn't real. And, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a whole thing. It's an inability to concentrate and to continually forget things. And it's a lot of that walking into another room and not remembering why you're there thing. <laughs> And we all do it, just ramp it up by about a hundred times and then you'll know what it's like to be a person who's having mental health challenges. And we're all having mental health challenges. I mean, after all, Course of Miracles tells us that, you know, this whole world is a mental health challenge that we're all having. And so uh, we all need courage. But the thing is, we all have courage. So the thing that, if you remember from The Wizard of Oz, uh, was the Cowardly Lion kept uh, thinking that when he got to the wizard, the wizard was going to give him courage. But the wizard didn't give the Cowardly Lion courage. The wizard said the Cowardly Lion always had courage. He had the courage, way more courage than most heroes had. But the one thing that the Cowardly Lion did not have was a courage medal. He didn't have a hero's medal. And I have one now. <laughs> I have a replica of the medal that the Cowardly Lion was given by the wizard that made the lion realize that him being fearful wasn't the problem, that he had faced his fears and that he had all the courage that anyone ever needed. So I really wish I could just give you all a medal to put on, but I'm gonna do the next big best thing, which is I will put it on for you. <laughs> and you will just, uh, you'll just benefit 
from my wearing it because we're all one and join. And so we'll all wear this together. If I can get it on here. Well, I, whoop, oh. I need, I need a better mirror than this. I will just, I'll just hold it. Okay. <laughs> so let, uh, let my metal here be your metal, be the metal that we all have. And know that we all are facing our fears every day. And as we do this discipline and challenge the sickness and death lobby with some of the profound teachings of A Course of Miracles, you are not meant to suffer and die. Your father wills these dreams be gone. Let truth correct them all. We're going to take on the sickness and death lobby. And... That takes courage, but we all have courage. And we all have now the hero's courage medal. And that's what miracle healers do. That's what miracle healers do. They take on the ego and they realize that it might be difficult and challenging, but they're okay with that because they know who walks beside them the Holy Spirit, the Christ, Jesus, and all of us, all of us mighty companions. Okay, thank you very much. That's my talk for today. I'll see if I can get my Heroes Medal on here while we're... The reason we're... why we were yeah. so afraid is quite apparent As we witness the destruction we have made we not to heaven We heard this call Through our walk For us After all these